Hi guys, welcome to Mash Hacks. My name is Ben Cull, and today I'm going to be showing you the simplest all grain brewing method possible, brew in a bag. Now this particular video is for beginners to intermediates and it's really to get you up and running with the brew in a bag process or if you've never brewed all grain before this is a great way to get started. Now the first thing you're going to need to do is check out my required equipment video which will be showing just up here somewhere and the second video to watch after that is going to be the water calculations video because we're going to assume a bit of knowledge there um, and we won't bother touching on that in this video we'll just get stuck straight into brewing. All right, set aside about six hours because it's going to take a while, um, especially on your first run. But uh, it's going to be super exciting. Let's get stuck into it. Okay, now the first thing uh, to mention about this video is that everything you see today can be done on the stovetop but you're going to want to uh, brew less. So you probably want a batch size of between five and 10 liters, uh, or for the Americans, like one to three gallons uh, at most, because it's uh, getting all that liquid to a boil on a stovetop is actually really, really quite difficult, uh, especially if you've got a big heavy duty pot like I do. Um, if you've got a smaller pot, feel free to use the stove, uh, but yeah, make sure your batch size is, is, is nice and small. Now, instead of using the stovetop today, I'm gonna be using a gas burner uh, outside uh, and we'll get to that in just a sec. You okay, see, so the first thing that we're going to do is uh, fill up our stainless steel pot with our strike water. Now, I've gone and calculated the strike water as per my other video in um, doing the water calculations. And for this particular recipe that I'm doing today, which by the way is a white rabbit dark ale clone, and I'll uh, throw a link up to the recipe now. But uh, essentially, the key figures you need to know are that there are 5.6 kilograms total grain weight, and that I'm going to then use 16.8 liters of strike water. So anywhere, it, you don't have to be super uh, critical with your volumes, but about 16.8 liters is what I'm gonna put into my pot. Uh, so this is the initial hot water that we heat up to put the grain into, and that's called our strike water. So let's go do it. Right, that's 16.8 litres, let's go put it on the burner. Okie doke. Just gonna fire up the burner now. I'm gonna set the gas to full whack and we'll go and heat up our strike water. Now the goal here is to get the strike water to just above where you wanna mash your grains. So I'm shooting for 72 degrees, which is about 163 Fahrenheit. Um, for an ideal mash temperature of 66 degrees, which is about 150 Fahrenheit. And here we can see that I've skipped ahead and we are getting pretty warm. I'm going to give the water a bit of a stir just to make sure I've got the right temperature reading. And I'll show you now, but I've gotten up to about 73 degrees Celsius, which again is about 163 Fahrenheit. So we're ready to tip in our grains and add our brew in a bag bag. Here you can see I've just quickly turned off the gas burner because we're at the correct temperature. We don't want to burn our bag. Okay, so adding the brew in a bag bag, um, you wanna get the seam on the inside. So all the you know thick bit you just saw there is all on the outside. So you don't get any grains caught in any of those seams. And we just add that straight in. Just better add a little. And we'll be ready to tip our grain directly into that. Now make sure you go ahead and buy pre-crushed grain from your uh, home brew store. Don't just go tipping in non-crushed grain. I've milled my own here, but uh, yours will usually come in. Maybe a vacuum sealed bag or just a bag, but yeah. Now I'm tipping in half and I'm gonna give this a really, really good stir. If you had two people uh, helping you out, you might be able to have one tip in slowly as the other one stirs and do it in all in one go, but I'm just gonna do it uh, half and half. So here we can see the second half of the grain going in now. And I'm gonna give this another really, really good stir. Sit there for a couple of minutes and, and just keep stirring because you want to make sure you don't have any dough balls, which I'll show you one in a minute. Um, you want to have nice consistent mash. So here you go. Let's see, I'm giving it a good stir and I'll pull out a dough ball, I think in just one second. There's one, it's just a clump of, clump of floury, doughy, you know, mashy sort of mess. And you want to get rid of all that. So you just kind of smush it up against the side. All right. I've given it a really good stir, probably three, four minutes of stirring. 
Um, the temperature is looking pretty good. I think I'm on 67 or 66 degrees, again about 150. I'm going to insulate the pot because I don't want to lose too much heat over the hour that I'm going to be mashing here. And uh, there we go. I'm going to set my timer for one hour and we'll let that, uh, we'll let that go. So here you can see I'm about 20 minutes in. Um, I'm just going to take the lid off and I'm going to give it a good stir. So one of the things I freaked out about early on when I was in my brewing career is the mash temperature you know, dropping really quickly. Um, and it's just because you know, the little probe isn't representative of the whole pot. It's just that one little bit. So give it a good stir every you know, 20 minutes or so, maybe twice during the, during the mash. And that'll, you'll see the temperature shoot back up again to roughly the correct temperature. But if it drops, don't freak out. Don't add heat. Just, you know, just let it ride. It's not going to drop so far that it won't be uh, manageable. Okay, so I've given it a stir. I'm just going to insulate it again and uh, wait for the rest of that mash to finish. All right, we have 60 minutes is up. I'm um, just giving it a quick stir before I uh, pull out the bag. So here we go. I'm going to very carefully uh, put the sides together, grab all four corners, and I'm going to lift the bag out of the pot. And I'm just going to kind of dangle it there. Um, now this can get a bit heavy and it is a bit warm, keep in mind, so don't burn yourself. But um, just, just lifting it out, leaving it out there for maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute, just to drain as much liquid as I can into the pot. I'm giving it a bit of a squeeze, you can see here. Don't worry about squeeze. Don't uh, be scared of squeezing. Um, I might even just give it a bit more on the sides, press it up against the side of the pot. Again, just trying to get as much liquid as we can out. And I'm expecting to get 11.2 um, litres out of this first uh, runnings here that's sitting in the pot. And I'm just transferring the bag into my fermenter bucket because it's a convenient little vessel. And what we're going to do here is sparge. Now, I'm going to do a batch sparge, which just means you... Um, put all the put it into a different vessel, put all the water in, and give it a good stir, just like we did. It's kind of like a second little mash. And all we're doing is rinsing the sugars off that grain. So I'm adding in 16.8 uh, liters of sparge water. Again, that's about 4.4 gallons. And uh, gonna give that a few minutes to just soak in that water. And this is just cold water, by the way. You know, typical, um, Typical procedures will tell you to use 78 degree water, or what's that, it's about 170-ish water. Um, but no, I'm just using cold water because it works just as well and it's much, much, much easier. Now I've turned the, the burner back on as well to get the uh, wort in the pot heating up because we want to get this whole thing to a boil, it's going to take quite a while. But um, after a few minutes and a few bits of stirring, it's probably five, ten minutes of sitting in that bucket, I'm going to pull that uh, bag out again. Now I've brought my jug along just so I can transfer that bag to the kitchen without making a mess. It's just going to catch my drips. And there we go. Now I'm just checking the side of the bucket there to see when I reach my target uh, second runnings here of about, uh, what am I shooting for, 16.8 litres or so. And once I've reached that volume, I'm going to move, go move that bag into the kitchen. And that, uh, that volume that's sitting in that bucket now is called the second runnings. It's the uh, second rinse of the grain after the primary mash. Okay, that uh, wet in the pot's heating up nicely. I'm gonna add all my second runnings now. And then you, even though despite adding cold water, the residual heat in the grains has really warmed that second runnings up. It's, uh, it sits at about 50 degrees, 40, 50 degrees. So that's pretty good. It's at about 120, 130 degrees. Fahrenheit. But yes, now I'm going to put the lid on to uh, get that boiling. And while we're waiting for that to get up to boiling, we're going to do our hop additions. So I've got three hop additions to make today. Um, now typically for those who don't know, a hop addition uh, has a time against it and a, and a volume or a, a weight. So this particular first one is 23 grams, which is what roughly 0 0.8 ounces. Um, and it's 60 minutes. So if you have a 60 minute addition, it means that you need to add it with 60 minutes to go. So it boils for the full 60 minutes. You'll typically have one early boil one, like a one bittering 60 minute addition, and then several, you know, uh, flavoring additions which come later in the boil, usually between 15 minutes to go and zero minutes to go. Okay, and one other thing you might want to add is a fining agent. You can use Irish moss or some people use Werflock powder. And essentially this just precipitates a bunch of the protein out of the beer 
uh, during the boil. Now I'm adding that to my second last um, addition, which is about 15 minutes, but you can add it anywhere from five to 15 minutes to go in the boil. Now I had to run out and grab a gas bottle because I was almost out of gas, which is why it's now nighttime. But um, still waiting for this to boil and you'll see it comes up to a boil very shortly. Here we go. So that stuff on the top there is the hot break. And you need to be really careful at this point because that foam, especially with a vigorous boil, can go right over the top and you'll get a boil over, which you get sticky, sugary liquid everywhere. It's awful. You don't want to do that. So I am stirring my wort, uh, stirring that foam to break it up. Uh, if you have a more vigorous burner though, you're probably going to want to turn the heat all the way down just while this foam dissipates. But it's at about this time, just after the foam dissipates, that I start the 60 minute uh, timer for a one hour boil. And here you'll see me add that first addition, which was at 60 minutes to go. And uh, again, you need to watch out because this can also foam up very rapidly. So make sure you've got your heat down and you're ready with a stick like I am here. But there we go. Okay, so I've been boiling for quite a while now. I'm just adding the last addition here. Uh, you can see that the volume has reduced, which is good. And uh, what we're gonna do, just so you're not uh, afraid of the big jump we're about to make, is as soon as the 60 minutes is up, turn your burner off. And we're gonna use the no chill method. So I carry that pot of boiling liquid inside very carefully. And I start filling up my fermenter bucket directly with the boiling wort. Now, of course, I've gone and uh, cleaned out that fermenter bucket and uh, made sure it's nice and clean. But all I'm doing is transferring the boiling hot liquid directly into that bucket. Now, please make sure you only do this to HDPE or type two plastic because um, it can handle the boiling temperatures. Don't do it to glass carboys, they will shatter. Now, this no-chill method is, pop is uh, quite popular in Australia and it basically saves time and effort because you don't need to chill your wort. Normally, you'd be chilling the wort at this stage, getting it down to pitchable temps. But we're not going to do that. We're going to fill up this bucket completely. We're going to whack a lid on it and it's going to chill overnight. Now, don't worry about uh, people telling you your thing will be too bitter or you know, it'll ruin the hop additions and all that. It doesn't make too much of a difference and it certainly makes for a very simple brew day. Now it's just a silicon tube hooked up to the uh, valve at the front there and I'm just draining straight out. Okay, I've completely filled the bucket. I'm just going to go and put a lid on that. And I'm also going to put a little tiny bowl over the top just to stop anything from flying through that hole at the top there. No insects, no nothing. Air can still get in, but that's fine. I'm gonna leave that to sit overnight and cool down to pitchable temps. And here we go, a new day, new pants, and a spray, uh, a spray bottle full of star sand. I'm just gonna sanitize the edges here and open her up, uh, ready to pitch the yeast. Now, I've cooled this down to about 21 degrees, which is about 68 Fahrenheit. Uh, Anywhere between 15 and 25 degrees is acceptable to pitch yeast and to ferment in, uh, which is about 60 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. If you go too far south, you won't get, uh, you might not get fermentation at all. If you go too far north of that, you'll get uh, some bad off flavors. Now here you can see I'm using a flask full of yeast. This is called a yeast starter. Um, you don't need this. That's a future video. That's a bit of a level up video. Um, all you're gonna do is pitch in your vial or smack pack, if you've got that. Just chuck it straight in. Or if you've got dry yeast, you can go ahead and just throw that straight in as well. Don't worry about rehydrating. You can do that if you want, but it's certainly not necessary. We're gonna go give this a good spray with star sand and uh, make sure we get a good tight seal on that bucket. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna grab our airlock and we're just gonna fill it up with a bit of the star sand solution from our spray bottle. Just enough to, you know, halfway fill the two chambers is good. As long as uh, CO2 can get out and air doesn't get in, we're, we're happy. Excellent, plug that guy in. And we'll put the lid on as well. Go ahead and move this to a cool, dark spot in your house. Again, you're gonna to wanna to shoot for about 20 degrees or 68 Fahrenheit. And, and that'll sit there and ferment for, you know, roughly 10 days. That's a good, that's a good length of time. 
Ooh, what a brew day. I hope you've enjoyed this simple brew in a bag process. Again, keep in mind, this is the easiest way to brew. It's the simplest way to brew, uh, but it's not exactly the best practice. If you'd like to continue learning along with me, I'm gonna be posting several level up videos. Uh, this will include things such as properly chilling your wort, um, yeast starters, you know, some proper batch sparging technique, um, lots of things that'll improve your brewing process that aren't necessary at the beginning, but will certainly help you out in the long run. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, feel free to pop them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next Mash Hacks video. Cheers, guys.